What's going on everybody? My name is Tenebris Infinite and welcome back to uh, the short series we're running on my channel where we're getting ready for base building by farming various materials here in Generation Zero. In the last episode, we gathered steel, adhesive, plastic, and rubber and I showed you dudes an excellent route to farm tanks so that that way you could get all of those materials. As well, in the last episode, we talked about a variety of different things, like optimizing your storage system in order to obtain and carry the most resources you possibly can in your recycling station, and also how to utilize a mule character. Today, we're going to be talking about an idea that I brought up in the last video about passive and active farming. So, the difference between the two is that active farming is essentially you going out and farming machines in order to gain certain resources or materials in the game. Whereas passive farming is you going off to locations with a lot of lootable items like backpacks or military boxes in order to obtain a lot of items. Now, passive farming has an inherent downside to it, in which case, passive farming, you have to wait for four hours for the loot to respawn here in Generation Zero. But, admittedly, with the introduction of things like the recycling station and uh, the ability to recycle and process more materials here in Generation Zero, uh, the process of gathering resources and crafting materials through passive farming is actually incredibly lucrative. Especially when it comes to some of the harder to get materials in the game. Uh, some of the materials are only available through recycling. So today we're going to go through how I farm all of those materials and also how I get some beneficial extra materials along the way. First up for today, let's talk about how I recycle materials in order to get myself absolute tons of thread. But there's other methods to obtaining thread as well, so I'm gonna go over kind of a couple methods to farming thread here, and I'm gonna go over a couple methods for each of these, just in case if you dudes need some variety or a fallback in case if anything changes along the way. Now, lately the primary method of obtaining thread that I've been using has been recycling advanced medkits. And the nice thing about this is it also gets me a little bit of titanium on the side for free as well. So all you need in order to recycle advanced medkits is just 10 of each medkit. And obtaining advanced medkits is really, really easy. Currently, we have a method of farming them endlessly in the game, but on top of that, you can obtain advanced first aid kits from taking down high-level machines like tanks and harvesters, which you're going to be doing naturally in your game anyway. The way I've been farming advanced med kits lately has been kind of a little bit lazy, but basically what I've been doing is I spawn in, start off at Vitsula, hit up the little camp over here, hit up the house over here, and then I just quit to menu and do the loop over and over and over again. And I net a really good amount of uh, advanced med kits, especially if I'm killing the tank along the way too, just to get an extra med kit there. Now the other method you could use to gathering string is farming locations with a lot of shipping crates that have a lot of toolboxes. Uh, the toolboxes are going to be your primary loot source for thread here in the game. Locations like uh, Nyhamnian Pier, uh, the Ostrovik Pier, uh, a lot of piers really, mostly the piers in the game have like just tons of shipping crates and you'll be able to find tons of toolboxes. But you can also find the toolboxes readily available at a lot of farmsteads. Farmsteads are fantastic locations to go looking for toolboxes so that that way you can gather string from them. You only net about six string per toolbox if you're going to see string spawn in it. So it can be pretty thin pickings, admittedly. Uh, no matter what you're doing for string gathering here in Generation Zero, you're literally gra gathering string like thread by thread, my dudes. So personally, I highly advise just using the farming uh, route that I just showed you dudes where you start off at Vitsula, you pick up the advanced med kit right here. Let's even run along. Let's do the route here real quick so that I can show you dudes. You come on out of Vitsula here. We aren't going to kill the tank along the way. We'll just kind of run on over. You can see the burning um, power line over there. So you just beeline it for that burning power line. And there are like... 
I don't even know, something like six advanced med kits over here or something like that? A lot of advanced med kits. For some reason, the tank isn't here. He must have wandered off. I've, I've kind of been AFK in that spot for a long time. Um, so, oh no, he's just down there. There he is. There he is. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. So, when you come on over here, you got a whole bunch of advanced first aid kits. Let's jump off the hill, kind of hurt ourselves a little bit, but we should be fine. And then you want to run along this way and just kind of follow the road uh, along this path until you get on over to this house over here. All right, so now that we're off at Clocker Stugan over here, we're going to run inside of the house and just run to the back room over here. There's this unfortunate dead soul here, and we're just gonna take their one med kit. We'll leave them with the other two because they clearly need them. Uh, we'll close the door here too to give them a little bit of privacy. And there you go, that's the loop. It's super easy, my dudes. It takes like two minutes, not even, and you net yourself around, what, uh, nine advanced first aid kits per run. So, yeah, let's do that run, uh, a couple more times, see how many advanced first aid kits we can get in, I don't know, let's say, like, a half hour or something like that, and, uh, go off and recycle it and see how much thread we get, my dudes. So, one half hour later, and let's see how many med kits we got up to. I know that it was quite a bit. I wasn't really counting as I went along, but uh, I, I know it was quite a bit. 137. Not bad, man. Not bad. Honestly, I felt like I was a little bit closer to 200, but that's probably just because the grinding got so, like mundane as I was doing it but you know what you pop on an album for like a half hour or something like that you walk out with like over a hundred advanced first aid kits honestly this advanced first aid kit farming route is the best farming for uh, any sort of first aid kit in the game and because it's so dang good it's probably not gonna be around in the game for forever so you dudes definitely want to go off and hit up this route if you want to have a decent stockpile of advanced first aid kits and also a lot of thread to utilize for crafting when base building comes later on this month. Jeez, man, I can't even say later on this month. It's only two weeks away, my dudes. <gasps> uh. All right, so let's turn in these resources and uh, the resources that you're already seeing in here uh, are resources that I have gathered from uh, going through various farms and stuff. So I was able to gather, what is this? 98 thread from going off to Nyhamnon, uh, Clint Pier, and the other places, and just doing some remedial thread farming. Uh, so 98 is not too bad. Let's see how much we got. Uh, and by the way, that was like probably close to like an hour of running around for that 98 thread. So let's see how much thread we get for this advanced first aid kit here. So we got what, 52 for a half hour. You know, they work out to be not too dissimilar. I mean like, so if you were to do like an hour of farming the advanced first aid kits, You'd probably wind up with a similar amount if you were to run around the map and go off and loot toolboxes for an hour. The only thing is, is toolboxes are kind of random chance, so there's some inherent downsides to the toolbox. So toolboxes are random chance based on your map seed. Uh, so when you start a fresh game here in Generation Zero, it populates your map with various loot containers, and those loot containers have a couple positions that they could be in, and a couple different types of loot containers that they could be. So it's all random chance whether or not you're going to have a lot of toolboxes in a location uh, in comparison to, say, another player's seed. Uh, and then the other kind of downside to the toolboxes is that, like, I could just keep farming these advanced first aid kits for as long as I want, but with the toolboxes, now that I'm done doing my, like, running around the map like a madman, uh, I have to wait for four hours in order to do another run to get another 98. So, currently, advanced first aid kits, still, cream of the crop when it comes to farming thread. 
Jeez, man, that was rant. But on the other hand, too, we managed to score ourselves a decent amount of titanium, too, which is going to be some good progress towards our next episode, uh, where we're going to be focusing on the rarer resources. But for now, let's move on to the next set of resources that we're going to be gathering from the recycling station specifically. Now, next up, we're going to talk about how I gather all of my lead, all of my copper, and all of my explosive. Uh, <laughs> this is quite a bit of materials, but I gather all three of them from one, uh, item in the game, specifically. And that item is the ammo pack. So, uh, let's go through how I farm absolute metric tons of ammo packs, uh, and I'll show you two different methods, because both methods, uh, currently work in the game, but one is tried and true and has worked since the beginning of the game, and the other one has kinda come and gone along the way here. Now there is a step before we get to actually farming these ammo packs, and that is farming through Brevkin's camping in order to, um, get myself field radios so that that way I can fast travel to the location that I'm going to be fast traveling to. Okay, so I went through the camp and looted all of the harvester drop spots and there weren't any field radios. Generation Zero trying to make me out as a liar, but trust me, field radios drop in those little harvester drop pods. Uh, but uh, I was also able to find a field radio on the downed soldier, so that's the other method uh, that you can use to gathering up a whole bunch of field radios is looting down soldiers. Uh, but trust me, these these little guys, they're kind of like mystery boxes and they, they have like a really wide amount of loot that you can pick up from them. Uh, and uh, field radios happen to be one of them. I highly advise adding these harvester drop stations to your loot list uh, if they aren't part of it. So we're over here at Viskendetsborg and there is a ammo pack here that happens to respawn upon fast travel. So uh, it's, it's really reliable uh, for just farming ridiculous amounts. So what I like to do is I like to go off and farm a bunch of field radios in the first place just to make farming this a little bit quicker and a little bit nicer. So then I just drop all of them down all of them down, just kind of in the same general area. Uh, and here we go. Pick up the ammo pack. Bada bing, bada boom. Fast travel, and make sure that you fast travel a decent distance away. And back we go. And then we grab the uh, ammo pack. And basically, just rinse and repeat. So there we go, my dudes, a little bit of fast traveling and staring at loading screens later, and we've got ourselves 18 ammo packs to go off and recycle. And on top of that, we could go off and start farming more uh, field radios in order to farm this location. But if you've run out of locations that you can farm field radios at, here's what you can do in that situation. So essentially, you want to utilize Calc Protet as your field radio. So what you're going to do is you're going to fast travel to a location that's far away. We found out here from just a bit of testing that you can fast travel to just the southern reaches of the north coast region. Uh, and that is far enough to respawn the ammo pack. So you fast travel to that location, fast travel to Calc Protet, and then run up to Fisk and Detsborg and pick up the ammo pack. So it's got a little bit of more legwork and it takes a significant amount of more time than just fast traveling in between field radios. So the other method of farming ammo packs is hitting up two types of locations in the map uh, specifically. So the two types of locations that you want to hit are military compounds, locations that have this little kind of symbol here. Uh, but you want to kind of hit mid-game to late-game areas. You don't want to hit up any military compounds on the archipelago. Uh, you want to be hitting up military compounds kind of in Overby Air Base area, the southern coast, pretty much anywhere except for like the centralized farmlands and the archipelago. 
Uh, and then on top of that, you want to be heading up bunkers in the same sort of regions so that that way you can pick yourself up ammo packs. Now, the downside to this is, again, that four hour wait time. And also on top of that, it's just significantly slower having to battle RNG in order to pick up these ammo packs. So uh, I really hope that this ammo pack spot doesn't get removed. But if it ever does in the future, uh, definitely just farm military compounds and bunkers, my dudes. So, now let's break down our next batch of ammo packs, put it into our recycling station, and I'm going to, again, just kind of continue doing these farming routes and these farming methods in the background, so that that way when base building comes around, all of these resources that you see here will all be up to 600. So, let's go! Bada bing, bada boom. We're up to 28, 14, and 14. Honestly, again, these resources are really slow coming, but, um, you know, if you sacrifice uh, the ammo packs, sacrifice, sacrifice the ammo packs to the Dark Lord Tenebris, and you'll get yourself tons of lead and copper and explosive, my dudes. Alright, so for the next resource that we're going to be recycling, I have to give shoutouts to my brother in arms here, Wired Gaming, for an absolutely fantastic adrenaline farming route. Uh, I'm, it's going to be linked down in the description below. If any of you dudes have not seen it yet, go check that video out. Uh, but that's the next resource that we're going to be uh, sacrificing to the Dark Lord Tenebris. So we're basically going to be sacrificing this for one resource in particular, Electrolyte. So you might be thinking to yourself, Tenebris, why the heck would you sacrifice adrenaline shots just for some crafting materials? And in all honesty, it's because I barely ever use adrenaline shots myself. I use like maybe two to three a month at most. I don't know. Like, you know, I really don't die that often in this game. And you don't need to die that often in this game either. If you go off and check out my playlist for tips and tricks, you dudes will be so good at this game that it will be absurd and you'll never die. Uh, and adrenaline shots will become what they are to me, uh, in which case they're just something to be recycled uh, to get myself electrolyte in specific. So let's go. Boom. 32 electrolyte out of 20 of them, and that's just lazy farming, but uh, you know, like, again, if you work that out, I might be wrong here, my math's kind of rough today, but something like 75 adrenaline shots uh, will wind up giving you 600 uh, electrolyte. Not bad at all, my dudes. Now you can also see here that we finally hit the 600 point for plastic. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to pop on through with our mule character. I'm not going to film this. I'm just going to explain it. We're going to pop on through with our mule character and just cr uh, kind of clean whatever excess is sitting on the top of the plastic. So that that way we can, again, maintain as much room as possible for all of our other resources. I just gotta say right now, Benny is mean mugging the heck out of me. He's like, you get down off that freaking table. And Anita, she is like, she's just trying to not look at me. She's trying to not give me the attention that I'm desperately begging for by jumping up on this table and crouching down. Sticking my ass right in her face. That's 10 weeks of ass sweat from fighting robots. How does it smell? Okay, so the next resource that we're going to talk about today is textile, and it's actually the last resource for the day, and I left it till the end because it's kind of the odd one from the bunch where we aren't really recycling anything for textile. Textile is super abundant and super easy to gather, so I'm just going to give you a couple tips and tricks, but really you should have no problems with keeping 600 textile inside of your crafting stations. You can get textile from backpacks, suitcases, from uh, from toolboxes, from so many different loot sources, and it just seems to have a really, really high priority on um, on spawning. Oh, dude, slick back ginger, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yo, shoutouts to Carl if anybody remembers Carl. But yeah, textile is super easy to gather. Let's just walk around here a little bit. We'll pick that up too. Uh, let's just walk around here a little bit and uh, see how much textile we can get just by running through Beardnet here. 
quick correction, um, toolboxes don't actually drop textile, that is, uh, briefcases and backpacks only, but still, you get such a ridiculous amount of textile that it doesn't really matter. Uh, again, just from one quick little jog through of, uh, Beertonet here, and not even a really thorough one, just kind of running through, uh, I managed to pick up 122 textile. So, if I run through Beertonet, what, like, four or five more times, I'm going to wind up at that 600 cap super quick and super easy. If you don't happen to have Himfjell, uh, the entirety of the archipelago has the most backpacks out of any region in the map. So the archipelago is your next best place to go to if you don't own Alpine Unrest. But just like I said in the last episode, if you don't own Alpine Unrest, go buy it now, man. It's so worth it. All right, my dude, so there you go. There is, oh my god, what? Thread, lead, copper, explosive, uh, and textile, and electrolyte. Dude, dude, so many resources. Just one video. Hopefully you dudes uh, were able to learn something from this. I know there's a lot of information in this video. Uh, that's kind of the goal of these videos is to just cram as much farming information as I can so everybody's on the same page here. Uh, but yeah, cheers. Thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we're doing all of the rare resources. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this very short series here on my channel. And I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.